Let's talk about Kyler Murray and the errors on the Cardinals. Now, I do believe that the future is bright for Kyler Murray and the errors on the Cardinals, and they can contend in this division for this upcoming season, but it is going to be tough. They have a lot of talent on this football team, but they are lacking in certain areas that are very important for this team to go out there and possibly make the NFL playoffs for this upcoming season and for years to come. Now, when you look at this division, you have the San Francisco 49ers. One of the best teams in the NFL. You have the Los Angeles Rams. They just made the NFL playoffs. The San Francisco 49ers just went to the previous Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs. You also have the Seattle Seahawks. They were one game away from making the NFL playoffs as well. So it's a very tough division. Now last season for the Arizona Cardinals was not ideal because Kyler Murray missed a good portion of the season recovering from that ACL injury, but he came back early. And I'm going to have more to talk about that in the next couple of minutes. But when I look at this team right now, they're in a very good situation. I don't believe that they will make the NFL playoffs for this upcoming season, but I could be wrong. They're headed into the right direction. Firing Cliff Kingsbury was a great move. You bring in Jonathan Gannon from the Philadelphia Eagles. Last season was his first season as a head coach in the NFL, and it was pretty successful. They were in a lot of close football games, and they were outgunned and outmatched in terms of talent. And he got the most out of that team last season, even when Kyler Murray was out, still recovering with that injury. Josh Dobbs had a lot of good moments for the Cardinals, but we all knew even if he went out there and looked like a feasible starter for seasons to come, he was not going to be the guy because Kyler Murray just got paid, and he is still making a lot of money on that contract. So they moved Josh Dobbs to the Minnesota Vikings. And you let Clayton Toon start a game. And then you bring in Kyler Murray. And you won your first game against the Atlanta Falcons when he came in. And he looked very good. I also believe this as well. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a franchise wide receiver straight out the gate. We get to talk about Malik Neighbors, who is going to be great in his own right. And Brian Thomas Jr. and all those guys in this draft class. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be... That next type of Larry Fitzgerald for the Arizona Cardinals. That's the type of impact that he can make with the Cardinals long term. This kid is going to be great. Can take the top off the defense. Can run every single route that you want him to. He's the perfect wide receiver. He has no weaknesses in his game. And they desperately needed a number one wide receiver. You see a couple of seasons ago, they went out there and they made a trade to get DeAndre Hopkins. And at the time, it was a great move. And DeAndre Hopkins was a very good wide receiver. But he started to deal with injuries and he started to slow down a little bit. Still a very good wide receiver. He's still a very good wide receiver with the Tennessee Titans. But he wasn't the same guy that he was with the Houston Texans because of the lack of availability dealing with the knee injury. And we also had terrible coaching with Cliff Kingsbury as well, who was the head coach and the main offensive play caller. It was terrible. And when I mentioned that Kyler Murray came back from that ACL injury, this is, more, this is what I wanted to talk more about. They had a clause in his contract that says, hey, he doesn't watch enough film. He needs to watch more film. And a lot of people in the national media are saying, hey, he's playing too many video games. They're poking fun at Kyler Murray. And Kyler Murray took it on the chin. He took it as a joke. You don't do that to your franchise quarterback. It backfired because they got Cliff Kingsbury out of the building. And the previous general manager is no longer here either. Because the, as the weeks went on, they came out, so they're going to take the Clause out of his contract. Why would you leak that type of information? It was like the Arizona Cardinals and that administration were trying to blame Kyler Murray for their shortcomings by putting that out there that they have underachieved since he's been drafted. But it's not his fault that Cliff Kingsbury was a terrible head coach. It's not his fault that Cliff Kingsbury was a horrible play caller. You know how many times he saved that man and every single season that he was the main offensive play caller and the head coach? It's the reason why he ran from him during his college days. And Cliff Kingsbury was trying to chase him. Cliff Kingsbury may be a very good offensive coordinator with the Washington Commanders. But one thing is true. He did not develop Kyler Murray to the next level. And he stunted his growth as a player. And no one can argue with that fact. Because they underachieved with the talent that they had. With DeAndre Hopkins. With Kyler Murray. With Marquise Brown as well. And Rodney Hudson. Because that terrible offensive scheme that they had. And that last season, he was the head coach. He was an offensive guy. The offense looked putrid. 
and their defense had to save their butts with J.J. Watt. They underachieved. Yes, they made the NFL playoffs with the Los Angeles Rams, and they went against them, and that's fine. But they got outmatched and outcoached on every single level. And yes, the Rams were a unit that season. But it shouldn't have come down to that. They couldn't even get past the 50-yard line in that game. Because pressure was always in Kyler Murray's face. Yes, the offensive line at the time was lackluster, but they did not call screens to slow down the blitz. They did not call cr crossing routes to go out there and help out Kyler Murray. It was the same plays over and over again that they ran in the regular season. I am happy that Cliff Kingsbury is no, no longer the head coach with the Cardinals. He was too young to be put in this situation, and he was too in inexperienced. You now have a head coach in Jonathan Gannon that can scheme up a defense that can help out Kyler Murray. You now have a general manager that's going to go out there and address the team needs at every single level instead of just going out there and trying to get big names that are behind their prime. You're not going to see that anymore. You have good young talent like Marvin Harrison Jr., a very good receiving tight end and Trey McBride, one of the best receiving tight ends from last season. He had over 800 receiving yards last season. So you have two guys that Kyler Murray can get the football to. And when they made the trade to get Marquise Hollywood Brown on paper, that was a very good move. That's his former college teammate. But it's also this as well. That's a wide receiver that can't stay healthy. He's injured right now. And he cannot run the full route tree. He's a one-trick pony in certain situations. And I'm not saying that he's not a good wide receiver, but to trade a first-round pick for him made zero sense. I'm happy that the brand-new administration is here. They have the same energy around them that the Detroit Lions had a couple of years ago, right before they became a dominant team in the NFC. And no way am I saying that the Cardinals are going to be the Detroit Lions over the next couple of seasons. But they have the right pieces in play to go out there and replicate some of that success. James Conner is a very good running back. Had over 1,000 yards rushing last season. Averaged 5 yards a carry. You also have a consistent run game with him. And that read option with him and Kyler Murray. You have Trey Benson as well, who's going to be a very good backup running back that you drafted in this year's draft class. And you can pair him up with those good wide receivers and those targets at the tight end spot. You also have Michael Wilson, who had over 500 receiving yards last season. Don't sleep on the errors on the Cardinals because they don't have some household name guys. They're very young, but you have a quarterback on his best day is easily a top 10 quarterback in the NFL with that skill set because of the way that he can run around and improvise and make throws off platform. We always hear about Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and these guys making these crazy throws, the same with Matthew Stafford. Kyler Murray can do the same thing. He's a very good quarterback. The offensive line hasn't been the best and the play calling hasn't been the best, but we have seen signs in the past of him being a great quarterback. I go back to a game a couple of years ago against the Las Vegas Raiders. He carried them to win that game, especially in the second half. He's a great talent that can run around. He can avoid pressure. And he can see downfield as well. In my opinion, he's becoming a very underrated quarterback because of the mistreatment by the previous administration. The offensive line is a huge concern of mine. I like Paris Johnson Jr. a lot. Jonah Williams at the right tackle position, he bothers me a lot. He gives up a lot of pressure. He gives up a lot of sacks. He allowed eight sacks last season. Now, he did play better when Kyler Murray was in the game because Kyler Murray can just go back there and evade pressure. But if Jonah Williams can develop and he can just be a little bit better, they'll make me more confident in the offensive line. I like Will Hernandez as a running guard, as a guy that goes out there on pass protection. It just depends. On third down, he was getting exposed a lot. But a lot of that was with Josh Dobbs. When Kyler Murray came back in, the offensive line did look better. So we'll see how it goes from there. But Kyler Murray just has to stay decisive inside the pocket. And when it's time to leave the pocket, go kill the team with your legs. He's done that in the past. He's not a quarterback that's just going to take the ball and say, no one's open, I'm going to just go run. He's going to make running his second option, and he's done that since his rookie season. You could say that you're concerned about injuries, but he has only suffered one major injury, and that was a torn ACL, and that was non-contact against the New England Patriots on a Monday night football game. I think that's a fluke injury. It happens. But he's never suffered a major injury like that, even dating back to college. Now, when you look at the defense, I'm worried about the defense as well. But you have a very good defensive head coach that can, that can scheme guys together. 
you may ask, why am I worried about their defense? Their pass rushing situation is ugly. And it was ugly as soon as J.J. Watt retired because he was their best pass rusher. And let's give J.J. Watt his flowers. That man was very good when he was able to stay on the field, one of the greatest defensive linemen in NFL history. The problem that the Cardinals face, B.J. Ojolari was going to be their star pass rusher for this upcoming season. He was a rookie last season from LSU. Second round pick. Tears his ACL. He's going to miss all of this upcoming season. So who is your star pass rusher? Who's going to be the guy that you can rely on? And usually when teams cannot rush the passer, it gives up a lot of space to the opposing team, especially in the secondary. Now, Jonathan Gannon did a great job of scheming pressure with the Philadelphia Eagles, but they had a lot of talented players. Zayvon Collins has not lived up to that hype of being that first-round pick a couple of years ago, but he's a solid player. Right now, he can rush the passer, but it's not at a high level. You have Darius Robinson, a very good young player coming from Missouri. You drafted him in this year's draft class. Can he step up and can he give you a lot of pressure? I like their defensive tackles as well when it comes against stopping the run. But like Nichols, he's going to go out there and stop the run. He's not going to go out there and pressure the pocket on a consistent basis. You have Justin Jones as well, four and a half sacks last season. And that's solid. But they need a guy that can go back there and they can pin their ears back and get them on third down. Look at the quarterbacks in this division. Look at the weapons in this division. You have Brendan Ayuk, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, Brock Purdy. Look at the Seattle Seahawks. Say what you want. You give Geno Smith a lot of time, he can kill you from inside the pocket. You have DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith, and the Jigba. Tyler Lockett. You also look at the Rams, Puka Nakua, and Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford. You don't want to give those veteran quarterbacks a lot of time. And say what you want about Brock Purdy, but he has operated very well in that San Francisco 49er system. So you have to be careful. If you can't get pressure out there, you're leaving those guys in a long-time situation to go out there and find holes in the secondary. But I do have a lot of faith in Jonathan Gannon, and he's going to figure things out, but it's going to be tough. He's going to have to coach his butt off for this upcoming season. The linebackers are very solid as well. I like Mac Wilson a lot. I like Kazir White. Those are two very good linebackers that can come in there. They can cover in space. They can make some tackles. Their secondary is solid. They're just very young. Sean Murphy Bunting is a very good veteran to have. He's the best cornerback right now. I like Garrett Williams. You also have Max Melton as well, rookie from Rutgers. I think that he can come in and eventually he's going to be that number one corner. He has the potential to be that. He fits the Jonathan Gannon, Jonathan Gannon system to a T. You have an amazing safety in Buda Baker as well. As long as he's healthy, he's one of the best safeties in the NFC. So the Cardinals have a lot of young talent, and they have a lot of firepower on the team. The problem is you're in a stacked division, and these guys have a lot of veterans on their team. It's going to take some time for these guys to develop, maybe a season or two, sometimes two to three years. But I believe straight out the gate, you have your franchise wide receiver and Marvin Harrison Jr., you have a great tight end in Trey McBride, who had a great season last season. You have key pieces. Just continue to put things in place. As long as Kyle Murray can stay healthy, you're going to be in some close football games. But let me know in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about the Arizona Cardinals? And can they truly contend in this division? I will say this. They're going to be in a better spot right now than they ever were with Cliff Kingsbury as a coach. And I know that they made the NFL playoffs one time with Cliff Kingsbury, I'll give him credit for that, but that team was stacked with the weapons that they had. But let me know in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about the Arizona Cardinals? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last one of you guys stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless. Peace.